Coming up on TechZilla, Windows activation, there's nothing to fear. We've got help reinstalling your OS. CES, we want your questions. Our top Blu-rays of 2010, mixing brands of memory, Robert's IR remote for the iPhone, and quite a bit more. So grab the fluffy blanket and a fresh donut, because TechZilla starts now. This episode of TechZilla is made possible by Netflix. Go to netflix.com slash techzilla for your free trial membership. Gamefly. Go to gamefly.com slash techzilla for your free trial membership. And squarespace.com. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Robert Heron. Welcome to TechZilla, hands-on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Hey, whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the best tiki bar in San Francisco, We've got an answer for you. And if we don't, we'll, well, wake up whoever does and beat the answer out of them. <laughs> Sorry, don't ever think Tiki Bar, yes. I think of noir films, which actually don't really coexist. I'm not really sure what a Tiki Bar is. I'll take you to one later. Awesome. Welcome to our first show of 2011. As you know, we are headed to CES momentarily. We'll have product spots from the show floor by Veronica, Robert, and I. They're going to be on the TechZilla Daily feed if you want to catch up with them, or on YouTube at youtube.com slash techhd. Hey, and if you're curious about product announcements at CES, yes, ask us a question. Email us at techzilla at revision3.com. Or tweet us at Robert Heron, at Veronica, at Patrick Norton, at TechZilla. Just make sure TechZilla, T-E-K-Z-I-L-L-A. Anyhow, just make sure you use the pound T-Z-C-E-S hashtag on Twitter. Matter of fact, that would actually work really well for the subject line in the email, too. That would be great. Pound T-Z-C-E-S so we can sort and find all of your delicious and delightful CES questions. Totally. Hey, chances are either Patrick or I... Or I have a bit of a yellow halo glow jaundice look about us. Wait, wait. Actually, we've been getting a lot of emails, a lot of tweets about this. This should be the busted sensor jaundiced chromatic aberration free episode. Brett and Josh, our beloved studio crew, got busy, swapped in a new camera, and we should be free of chromatic aberrations. And our apologies for the irritation. Trust us, it's been bothering us even more than it's been bothering you. Should we start 2011 off with a Windows 7 question? I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie writes in, Robert suggested in episode 176 that a clean install of Windows 7 could squeeze some extra speed out of your PC. I was wondering how this affected your online activation of Windows. I have installed Windows 7 twice on my PC using the same disk. The first time I was able to do it online. The second time I had to call to get an activation code. How many times does Windows 7 allow you to activate after a clean install? Good question, hmm. Jamie. Hmm. What does the fact say? Well, <laughs> according to the Microsoft Windows activation fact, you can reinstall Windows on the same computer as many times as you want because activation pairs the Windows product key with information about the computer hardware. Now, if you make a significant hardware change, you might have to activate Windows again. Now, if you make a major hardware change or you move your license to a new PC, you might get that failed message and have to activate by phone. Yeah, the, the worst scenario is like, Somebody who doesn't like you, say at university, uh, grabs your copy of Windows and your activation key and posts them on BitTorrent, and suddenly your activation key starts showing up on four continents. Then calling up to Windows is going to be like, sorry, that really sucks for you, dude. Um, unless you have the original proof of purchase, maybe, or something like that. But generally speaking, yeah, you, you can activate it as many times as you want. It's just sometimes you're going to have to call them up. So if you don't have access to a phone, well, you've got 30 days to get access to a phone to activate it. Not hard. Or, but, you yeah. know what, I think Google has a uh, phone built into their uh, email client now, so use Skype, if nothing else. <laughs> get a hold of them. Get it done. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's frustrating, but it's the nature of the 21st century securities. Go Linux if you don't like it. Coming up next, the top 10 Blu-rays of 2010. But before we do that... Hey, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. This week, the Western-style action adventure 310 to Yuma is at the top of my Netflix delivery queue. Little Christian Bale and Russell Crowe in glorious Blu-ray quality. Netflix delivers movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. As a Netflix member, you can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streaming directly to your PC, Mac, or right to your TV via Netflix ready device like the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and the Nintendo Wii console. Plus, get DVDs by mail in about one business day. Watch as many movies as you want, shipping is free, and there are never any late fees or due dates. Keep the movies as long as you like. DVDs by mail, plus instantly right to your TV. 
Get unlimited movies two ways for one low monthly price. As a new member and Techzilla viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash Techzilla and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. Time to get our HD Nation on. Mr. Heron's all excited about using his iPhone to control his home theater. We're going to find out if it's the death of the Logitech Harmony remote in Mr. Heron's house next. Hey, right now, though, we've got our top five movies that were released on Blu-ray in 2010, at least according to producer Serafina, who pulled these together from lists we all sent her. Number one, the very awesome Dr. Horrible sing-along blog. What happens when Joss Whedon has time to kill because of a writer's strike? A three-part miniseries with Neil Patrick Harris as the wannabe supervillain Dr. Horrible. Nathan Fillion is the bad guy, good guy. Captain Hammer, uh, Felicia Day is their mutual love interest. Blu-ray instead of the incredibly compressed version that came out online with an amazing commentary track of a whole new set of original songs performed by cast and crew. Low budget, hell yes, but we love this one. Yeah. Number two, kick ass. Teen decides to become a superhero, gets famous on YouTube, and then gets in over his head in a world of ultra-violence he never knew existed. Fun! Unless you're a parent freaked out by Big Daddy's willingness to put hit girl in harm's way, of course. <laughs> Number three, the movie you just can't ignore, unless you can, Avatar. James Cameron's sci-fi epic might have been the most anticipated film of last year. This year we saw two Blu-ray releases of the film, three if you count the 3D version only available with the purchase of a Panasonic 3D HD TV. If you don't yet know the story of the blue people versus their Earthlings, just Google it. Number four, we have Battlestar Galactica, the complete first season. Actually, the complete series altogether. Okay, the limited edition box set with the collectible Cylon was released last year, yeah. but the lower price standard box set that fits on the shelves was released this summer. The Galactica search for a new planet is just as awesome without the Cylon doll, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Number five, Iron Man 2, released in theaters in May, then on Blu-ray like three months later, it feels like. The sequel to the 2008 Iron Man once again stars Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, with Mickey Rourke as the villain and Scarlett Johansson as some kind of a forful agent thing. Amazing CG, a very good one to show off your new ACTV and surround sound system. Nice. Hey, and then since we can't count, let's throw in HBO's 10-part miniseries, The Pacific, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. BBC Sherlock, season one. And this maybe might have should have been number four or five, Inception, another one that's gonna absolutely amaze you on Blu-ray on an HDTV. Not to mention Zombieland and Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Cool. And let's just add Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and the standalone edition of The Matrix. Awesome. They My all favorite look trilogy. So good. <laughs> Well, my, I love the movie, you love the trilogy, let us not discuss it again. All right. We got an email from Josh who says, please discuss if it's actually worth getting a plasma TV calibrated by Best Buy. I recently purchased a 50-inch Panasonic on Black Friday. Is it really worth $199 Best Buy charges to calibrate a TV? Does the picture really get that much better? Is it something I could just find out on a forum for the best settings? Josh in beautiful Blaine, Minnesota. Mr. Heron. Yeah. What, what do you charge to calibrate an HDTV? It varies. I'd <laughs> say roughly about 350 to 500 mm -hmm. depending on the complexity of the setup and what I'm messing with and what's involved. Yeah, we, we actually, it's, it's, it, calibration can make a dramatic difference in the look of your TV. Probably in some cases more so in the middle or low end of the range rather than the high end, question mark? I'm, at this point, I'm willing to say it helps just about every TV. Right. I, I can't speak for what Best Buy offers and how they're trained. I assume they've gone through some of the same training. I hope they would have gone through some of the same we, training. We, we got some emails that basically they were like, we know what we're doing, don't, don't diss us. I hope so, because there are, there, all the new TVs have so many new settings in them to mm -hmm. mess with that... Uh, you don't want somebody who doesn't know what they're doing doing that. And you can really eke out a lot of extra picture performance by having somebody who knows what they're doing go in and take care of that for you. Namely, it's the big stuff. Uh, disable overscan, get color right, get the brightness and contrast it properly. And most importantly, getting the white balance, getting those shades of gray to all be the same color. That makes the picture pop. And if somebody's got the right tools and they come in and do it right, then yeah, it's totally worth the money to have it done, especially if you have a premium TV and you, you want it to look its best. Well, I mean, I could buy like a $20 Spears & Munsell Blu-ray and make a significant difference in my picture. I'll totally. The, 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 basically, the, 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 there's standards for what the colors are supposed to look like, the brightness levels, the contrast. What should a professional think? I can make a pretty big difference with a $20 Blu-ray disc totally. or DVD. What extra is like, you you roll in with an entire box full of high-end hardware. What, what should somebody who really knows what they're doing look M like? Messing with more of the arcane settings that right. require, you have to have a device to actually measure the content coming off the TV. The, 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 what the TV is doing and to be able to record that and look at it on graphs to say, okay, I need to tweak this up a little bit here, that down a little bit here, I need to get the white. Maybe in the darker grays, mm -hmm. there's more green than should be and you need to knock that down, but in the upper grays and the brighter grays, you're getting some, say it's more blue and you want to tame that a little right. bit. 
those kind of things you need hardware to really analyze the set itself. And it helps to do it over and over, because even after you're all done, you still got to take a look at real world content mm -hmm. that you're familiar with and make a value judgment whether or not you know it's it's looking right to your eye. Hopefully it's the stuff you've watched so many times that you know how the scene <laughs> should look. And yeah. you, maybe you've seen it on a pretty well calibrated monitor to begin with. Yeah, they're basically when you're paying a professional, you're getting their expertise, they're paying off the incredibly expensive equipment they're dragging around your house. And oh yes, what do some of the vendors charge? 150 bucks for the manuals for the, the secret codes? Sometimes, <laughs> I mean, you can find just about everything you need to know about any TV just by digging around online. Right. But you know, you, you just have to wonder too whether that information you're being provided is accurate and should you even be messing with things you don't know anything about and generally I say no just stick with the basic right. controls in a TV you can't really hurt a TV with its basic controls if you start digging around into some of the more arcane settings as long as you're not in the TV's hidden service menus you <laughs> should be okay you might make the picture look worse but you won't damage anything. So is there any calibration disc you like more than the Spears and Munsell right now? Not really and if you do buy that disc a great trick for it is to use the directional pad to go up if you want to see an explanation of what you're looking at, you push down to make that hide, and you go right. left and right to navigate forward and backward. That's, I wish they would just say that right on the disc. Oh, by the way, just use the D-pad and nothing else. I will remember that. Time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of January 4th. First up, Catfish. This 2010 documentary explores a relationship that develops between a New York photographer and a family in Michigan, except things aren't quite what they seem. The only extras on this disc is a 25-minute Q&A with the filmmakers, which gives them a chance to explain more about the whole process, and chances are you'll want to know more about the story once the movie's over. Next up, it's back to HD DVD time Backdraft, now available for the first time on Blu-ray, with pretty much the same exact set of features from the 15th Anniversary Edition DVD in 2006. Looks to be a new transfer. It's hard to tell if it's the HD DVD transfer, which was pretty good, or a new Blu-ray transfer, but if you've been watching it on cable for years, it's going to look awesome. Also out this week, a box set of Robert Rodriguez's uh, well, mariachi trilogy, El Mariachi and Desperado, which is crammed on a double feature. Desperado looks okay. El Mariachi looks incredibly compressed, or I had every setting on my TV wrong. And an absolutely gorgeous second Blu-ray with Once Upon a Time in Mexico, which includes the best how to cook a meal, or I should say a main dish recipe I've ever seen. Nice. Yeah, Robert Rodriguez can teach you how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> hey, other releases include 8213 Gacy House, uh -oh. After Dark Horror Fest, Blu-ray Double Feature, Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4, Airline Disaster, Austin Powers and Gold Member, Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery, Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me, Battlestar Galactica, Season 4, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Season 8, Motion Comic, Case 39, Coraline in 3D, Dinner for Schmucks, Ever After, A Cinderella Story, Gun, Hope Floats, 2010's Howl, Ishtar, The Last Exorcism, Machete, My Dog Skip, Ticking Clock, and A Walk in the Clouds. After the break, the best home theater remote yet? Hmm, but first, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace. Squarespace offers users a flexible solution for anyone looking to create a blog, personal portfolio, or any kind of website. No matter what level of coding experience you have, Squarespace can provide the tools needed to create a high-end, complex website that is uniquely your own. Don't worry if you come across with any questions or issues, Squarespace also offers every user 24-7 support. Squarespace just pushed a brand new social wizard for geolocation services. Display your most recent check-ins from Foursquare, Gowalla, and Facebook places on a live Google map. Squarespace is the only web publishing platform with a native built-in solution for displaying your check-in data. The widget is totally customizable and fully integrated with the Squarespace style editor. Squarespace's iPhone app lets you publish to your blog on the go and comment moderation. Get push notifications to approve new comments, mark existing comments as spam, reply to comments, and more, all from your iPhone. Many of the internet's highest trafficked web pages are powered by Squarespace, not to mention many of the personal pages of Revision 3 hosts and personalities. Go to www.squarespace.com to learn more. Be sure to enter the code TECHZELLO when checking out to earn 10% off the lifetime of your order.
Doesn't matter if you're a home theater geek or just somebody with a bunch of boxes near the HD TV, you want a good remote control. Otherwise, it can be really frustrating. Where's that control? Where's this control? Where's the TV control? Where's the Blu-ray control? Mr. Heron is looking for something to beat the classic Logitech Harmony remote. The latest is series of iPhone remotes, including their Univer Uni Unity remote from Gear 4. Yes. I4 cannot read teleprompter. <laughs> What's the story? It's basically, there's like four or five different iPhone infrared adapters out. What do you think so far? Uh, this one I'm enjoying quite a bit. And I've just got it. Basically, we're talking about the Unity remote from Gear 4. 99 bucks. You can buy this and with free software on your Apple device, namely the iPhone, the iPod Touch, or iPad, it will turn it into a universal remote control that you can use in your in your house or in your in your home theater environment. Compatibility-wise, we're talking specifically the iPhone 3G, 3GS, and 4, and the iPod Touch second, third, and fourth gen plus right. the iPad. So essentially, you've got this little wonderful device, which is an IR block. I'm counting one, two, three, There's four, a, five, the six, black cylinder seven. of IR blasting. Yeah, I'm counting seven IR, well, seven LEDs inside of this. Exactly. It's convenient so you don't really have to aim it. You just set it on the table near your gear or you know somewhere near the gear that it can point to. This links with a Bluetooth connection mm -hmm. to there. So basically, you sync the devices together with your phone. Uh, there's a free app you download off the Apple Store. Boom, you set it up. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. And then once you get into the setup itself for the devices you have in your home, I thought it would be very similar to what you get with the Harmony remote, mm -hmm. wherein you select a manufacturer and it's like, oh, what kind of device from that manufacturer? Oh, a TV player or a TV or a Blu-ray player or a home theater. Because chain functions together so that if I press, like, watch a Blu-ray that it, you know, changes the receiver and turns on the Blu-ray Totally. It has some of those activity-based the... things like mm -hmm. you might be familiar with Harmony. It's like watch TV. Boop, boop, boop. Turns everything on and does it. And it goes through a lot of Q&A about that. Are you using your home theater receiver as the audio device mm -hmm. instead of the TV speakers and questions like that as well. Cool. And you have individual control over the devices too so that you can say like turn off just one thing or turn on just one thing and not have like everything turn on or off. Do, do I have to like manually check each device and put them together or is there a setup assistant like the Logitech Harmony? They actually have a built-in setup assistant which is really great for the first time because I, I, I just don't like reading manuals, at least not initially. So uh, for that it was great. But once you've got it going, it's kind of nice. Like on the TV, uh, just for quickly, I'll just say that it provides a nice three by three control pad layout with multiple windows. You just kind of slide it back and forth. It provides cool. basically pretty much everything I wanted. I do like it. And as far as some of the other nifty things it does, it does something called gesture control. So without even really looking at the remote, you can get to the gesture. I'm going to put it on Unity here. Watch TV. But you can then just slide your finger, say, up and down to control volume or left and right to change channel. So you don't really have to look at it or worry about hitting the specific button. And usually in the middle, it would be mute to tap. You just tap it in the middle. So for that, I like it a lot. And it keeps asking me if I want help. So I just said, no, I don't. So 100 bucks, is it, is it worth buying? I, I would say if the performance keeps up, which is OK at this point, it's mm -hmm. definitely not as fast as I've noticed as a direct Bluetooth link to the gear I have that supports mm -hmm. a direct Bluetooth link. However, for the infrared devices, which is the majority of the content, or the majority of the products I have in my house, it's nice to have one product that does it all. And um, I'm not, I'm not going to say don't buy it, but I do want to see what everyone else is doing. This one was pretty easy to set up. Right. And I also like the fact that it's a battery-powered puck device. And oh, cool. you can actually set up scheduling. So I have it turn on about 4 o'clock in the afternoon and turn off at midnight. So I don't have to worry about it being on. I, I was, at first, I was wishing, oh, why won't it just be on all the time? But then I realized, oh, that would just drain the battery unnecessarily. Does this control Bluetooth devices like your PS3? No. Does this control Bluetooth devices like your PS3? Yes. Can well, I, I can do, link. Can I do it from inside the, the remote program that works with this? That is that is what I'm still learning. If okay. it can be done, I've been going through their online support and stuff like that to see that. I don't believe it does. Okay. And if that were the case, I would be all over this. Yeah, because I'm still using two remote programs right now then. I'm still using Hippo Remote for my Bluetooth stuff. and But I'm using this right now for all of my infrared gear. You so. don't have the Bluetooth adapter for the Logitech Harmony remote? We'll talk about this later. OK. <laughs> <laughs> we got an email from Jordan out in oh so cold Anchorage, Alaska, who writes in, I was wondering about combining different brands of RAM. The RAM I originally bought is no longer available, but I'm looking to add a couple more sticks. What's more important for compatibility? I'm guessing the same speed is important, but what about timing, voltage, and capacity? Should I try and mix and match, or would it be easier to just replace all the RAM with a new set? Jordan in Anchorage. Um, you know, I, I have no problem. I've mixed, in terms of like, if you have paired or, or tripled up slots, I don't recommend mixing different brands of RAM. If you have two slots and two slots, 
I haven't had any problems with different brands of RAM, but I'm also really careful about keeping them as the specs as close to the same as possible. Um, yeah. Or just run it at whatever the low end spec is right. for the RAM sticks you're using. That's what's really funny, right? You can run faster RAM in a slower slot. Basically, it'll downgrade the performance. But timing and speed are important, especially if you're, you're working with performance RAM or high-end RAM. You can experiment with mixing and matching. Uh, but if you can't afford it, it may actually, you may want to check. Because sometimes it's actually cheaper to buy two new bigger sticks than two smaller sticks to keep it in there. Totally. And you might want to search around for any enthusiasts who've been playing around benchmarking your motherboard because it's really frustrating to find out that you bought maybe 12 gigabytes of RAM in six sticks to find out that your motherboard would be a whole heck of a lot faster if you bought 12 gigabytes of RAM in three sticks, which is a Core i7 problem, but there are similar issues on older motherboards. I'd also say, too, just if you're dealing with a dual-channel memory system mm -hmm. or a triple-channel memory system, too, to make sure, that's where you really want to make sure you're getting pairs yeah. or three pieces to go I, I with wouldn't, the triple I wouldn't channel. mix two different brands of memory in dual channel or triple channel. But that's usually for newer systems too, so. Good yeah, to they've know. been doing DDR for a while, or dual channel memory <laughs> with DDR for a while. If you can, it's best to have all the same memory across all your slots. If not, try to make sure the same brand, but more importantly, the same speeds in the two slots that are related, or three slots that are related to each other. Still to come, we got more of your viewer questions, but first, let's thank one of our sponsors, Gamefly. We're talking about the largest online video game rental service. They offer you a choice of over 7,000 new and classic video game titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at just $15.95 a month, Gamefly members, well, you, if you're a Gamefly member, can score one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as you like. No late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, send it back, and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you really like the game you're playing, click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price and Gamefly will mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Okay, Texilla viewers, you want to get a 15-day free trial? Do yourself a favor and go to Gamefly.com slash Techzilla and please support Techzilla by supporting our sponsors like Gamefly.com. Long winter nights must have us thinking about rebuilding our systems, right? Much like Jay who wrote us with this follow-up comment, a few weeks ago, you suggested purchasing the Windows 7 Family Pack that allows you to upgrade three PCs to Windows 7. You also stated that a fresh install was the way to go, but it appears that with this upgrade, there must be an old version on the PC. So, would you do a fresh install of the old OS XP, then do an upgrade, or is there a better way? Paul Thoreau wrote an awesome article on how to do a clean install with Windows 7 Upgrade Media. We're going to give you a link to that in the show notes because it is worth your time reading and he deserves your traffic. Totally. Bookmark that sucker. Uh, often the Windows 7 upgrade disk will act just like a full install disk. And if it doesn't, Mr. Throw's article provides several options that <laughs> will work. Uh, some of the main points really are that Windows 7 will always activate and install if there's a previous version of Windows already installed on the PC's hard drive. That's kind of key. It, it almost always works in that scenario. However, I've done it with a brand new hard drive doing an install with an upgrade disk, and right. that's where Paul Thoreau's article just makes it awesome and comes in handy. And it'll tell you what you need to do to make it work. Yeah. And apparently this is all with the approval of the Microsoft peeps, so. Go figure. Yep. It's good stuff. Making life easy for us. <laughs> Finally, we got this email from Jeff, who was a touch dismayed by our website pick a few shows ago. He writes in, Roger, my coworkers and I at techbargains.com were just checking out the latest Techzilla episode. While we enjoyed the show, we were a bit disheartened by the website we just can't get enough of segment. With all due respect to you and the guys over at Ben's Bargains, who we do know, we think our website has much better tech content for your tech viewers. Hopefully you've used our site before and we're just reminding you of who we are. If not, we invite you to check us out at techbargains.com and see for yourself. I'm confident we can save more money on all your tech gadget purchases. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thanks, Jeff. We, we should point out actually that Roger does use Tech Bargains as well as Ben's Bargains. And actually, I think like 15 sites are checked religiously before he pulls out the plastic on any tech purchase, whether it's extra screws for a PC case or a brand new motherboard and CPU. So please, make Jeff happy, and if you're in the shopping mood for tech gear, check out Ben's Bargains and Tech Bargains and, well, any other sites we happen to put in the show notes for you. Because saving money is something everyone likes.
<laughs> for everybody watching, we live in your questions. Email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech help, product views, how to's, you ask us, we'll do it. But we need your emails, so don't be shy. Send them into techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, send us a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Just keep it to 15 seconds, upload to YouTube, and send us the link in an email with video question in the subject line. And as always, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash techzilla. And don't forget, all the CES coverage is going to be coming out first at revision3.com slash techzilla on the daily feed and on YouTube at youtube.com slash techhd. So check that out. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching and Happy New Year. I'm Patrick Norton. <laughs> I'm Robert Harrod. Until next time, you've been watching Techzilla. Time to get our HD Nation on. Robert's getting all excited about using his iPhone to control his home theater. We're going to find out if it's the death of the Logitonic Harmonish. <laughs> it's a drink. <laughs> Logitonic on rye in three, two, one.